Lesson is going to be a little bit more relaxed, kind of just chillax, um, hang out. You're going to need your reading journal. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to present this book to you and we're going to read through it and you're going to take a couple of notes. At the end of me reading through it, I'm going to read about five or six pages. At the end of those five or six pages, you are going to transfer one of the notes that you took today into a exit slip type form like the one you did for uh, captions photographs and sidebars on Tuesday. So be ready for that. You do need to be taking some notes and you will be turning one in at the end. But for most of this lesson, I'm gonna be reading this story to you. You can follow along um, either in the book or you can follow along <clears throat> with the video. It's up to you. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and put this, present this. And there we are. So I'm going to be reading Electrical Wizard, How Nikola Tesla Lit Up the World. Now, we've talked about all the different types of nonfiction before. And this nonfiction, take a second and guess what type of nonfiction you think this is going to be. So Nikola Tesla is a real person. Uh, this is a nonfiction text. And this is going to be a biography or the story of his life. So in traditional nonfiction fashion. We're gonna start out with him as a child and then we're gonna go up and we're gonna talk about what he did when he got a little bit older, oops, excuse me, and some of the inventions and things that he did. Before I get into that, I wanna take a look at the cover. So I'm seeing a lot of things going on here. I'm gonna guess by the crowd here, especially their outfits, that this um, story is gonna take place in the past at some point. It's obviously not a future story. It couldn't really be nonfiction. But it looks like, um, I want to say early 1900s maybe, so about 100 years ago. Um, he has this cord going and it looks like a big electrical ball. And then it's called Electrical Wizard. So I'm assuming it's going to be about maybe the invention of electricity or how electricity came to be. Now there's something else here in here that's hinting at electricity. Look at that title, How Nikola Tesla Lit Up the World. One of those words should really jump off the page at you, especially if you've been paying attention to the news recently. The word is Tesla. The word Tesla should really jump off the page at you because that's the name of a very famous car manufacturer. And if you don't know anything about cars, the Tesla is an all electric car one of the newest all electric cars. So Nikola Tesla, I guess that's the guy's name. It doesn't look like he's inventing these cars. So I wonder how those two are gonna come together. So we got electricity, we have an older story, and we got this guy harnessing some electrical ball in his hand. So as I go through the read through this biography, make any notes that you want. It can be notes on things you learned as you went. It can be notes on, um, any of the nonfiction text features we've discussed, but you do need to have some notes. I'm gonna go through about 10 slides, so make sure you're ready for that. Um, so we got a whole bunch of notes on just the cover alone. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to jump into the story. Oh, it is a biography. Said it right there. That page has not been enlarged. How Nikola Tesla lit up the world. Table of contents, as we're used to. And it just has the names of the chapters and then some other important things down here. And here's some lovely pictures. Chapter one. The night of Nikola Tesla's birth, lightning zapped, crackled, and flashed overhead. For years after, booming thunder drew the poor Serbian boy to the window of his family's small house. Nikola gazed, mystified, as electrical bolts ricocheted across the sky. One evening, even when he was three, Nikola stroked his cat, Macaque. The cat's fur snapped with tiny sparks. What is it, Nikola wondered. Was it some kind of wizardry? Electricity, his father explained, the same thing you see through the trees in a storm. Enchanted by the sparking halo in his hands, his hands had conjured, Nikola wondered what other magic he could perform. I'm going to pause real quick because there are five or six words right there that definitely should be jumping off the page at you um, as unknown words. So definitely some notes that we could be taking right now. 
I have Serbian. I have Ricocheted. Uh, Enchanted and Conjured. So a lot of unknown words that could be in your notebook right now. When he was five, Nicola dangled his fingers in a nearby brook. How fast the water moved, how hard it pushed his hand. Nicola had an idea. He found a disc cut from a tree trunk. He poked a hole in the disc, jammed a stick through the hole, then balanced the wheel above the stream. The wooden wheel spun and spun as if under the spell of the water. Nicola began to notice invisible energy everywhere. Even the flight of insects thrummed with power. When he was nine, he built a propeller spun by flying June bugs. Once they were started, he marveled. They continue whirling for hours and hours. So definitely some uh, possibly text-to-text, text, text-to-world connections that we could be making here about any experiences we had when we were children. If you're falling behind with the notes or trying to read along with me, feel free to pause the video at any point to catch up. <clears throat> and there's his June bug propeller. As a teenager, Nicola became entranced by a photograph of Niagara Falls's cascading water. As he remembered his little creek water wheel, a vision flashed in his mind. He imagined giant water wheels pummeled by Niagara's pounding waters, spinning endlessly. Nicola made a prophecy. Someday I will turn the power of Niagara Falls into electricity. Now we're going to take a quick pause right here, and I want you to notice the story, or excuse me, the structure of this nonfiction text. Because it's a biography, it follows a narrative story structure. It tells a story. So we have characters, we have settings. Sounds like we have a plot coming up and possibly some problems. So even though it follows that traditional fiction storyline, um, some nonfiction text, be, some nonfiction texts, especially biographies will very often follow that narrative structure. There he is, handsome looking gentleman having a seat. Chapter two. In college, Nicola eagerly watched a demonstration of a new electrical machine. The professor spun a hand crank, whirr, whirr, making an alternating electrical current that surged back and forth, back and forth. With a burst of noisy sparks, tzz, tzz, the current was forced to move through a wire in only one direction so it could run a motor. Inspiration flashed. Nicola realized that the motor didn't need to be run by direct current. Alternating current, like the kind created by the hand crank, could power the motor. Sticking with alternating current would be simpler than converting to direct current, and it would eliminate that awful sparking. Nicola suggested this to his class. The professor scoffed. Many people had tried to make motors that could run with alternating current. All had failed. The professor declared, Mr. Tesla will accomplish great things, but he certainly will never do this. But a few days later, certainty washed over Nicola. He would find a way to harness the power of alternating current. So I have a lot of things here. I have these. I'm not going to tell you what those are, but let's see if you can remember in your notes. And this right here, those words that make sounds. The problem of alternating current hummed in Nicola's mind. He took a job climbing telephone poles in Budapest and imagined electrical current that surged back and forth. Back and forth, excuse me. He invented a loudspeaker for phones and imagined electrical current that surged back and forth, back and forth. I'm seeing that's coming up again and again, the back and forth. I wonder if there's a name for that. He moved to Paris where he worked on electrical devices designed by American inventor Thomas Edison. Generators, motors, fuses, and switches. And imagined electrical current that surged back and forth. Back and forth. Chapter 3. One day, when he was 26, Nicola went for a walk with a friend. The sun set in a fiery blaze. The buzzing thoughts inside Nicola's head sparked together like a lightning bolt. Suddenly, he understood how to power a motor using alternating current. He saw it all clearly in his mind. Nicola grabbed a stick, waving it like a wand. See how smoothly it is running, he gasped. 
There is no sparking. I see nothing, said his friend. The sun is not sparking. Are you ill? Nicola dropped to his knees and began drawing a diagram in the dirt. At last, his companion understood how alternating current could spin a motor using magnets whose poles flipped back and forth, back and forth. Over the next few months, Nicola conjured in his head all the parts of a new electrical system based on alternating current. Night and day, Nicola pictured the machines designing, testing, and fixing problems he saw. He didn't have to write anything down. He could see it all in his mind. Nicola traveled through Europe seeking money to build his AC machines. He felt AC. I wonder what AC stands for. It's definitely not air conditioning because we haven't mentioned anything about air conditioning yet. See if you can figure out what AC stands for. He felt like a fortune teller. The days of candlelight, gas lamps, and direct current were over, he told investors. Not only could alternating per current power lights and motors, but it could also travel great distances, much more cheaply and efficiently than direct current. It could power every house, every business, everything from tiny light bulbs to huge factories. No one believed him. So he sailed to America, where he knew of at least one person who would be interested in his ideas, Thomas Edison. And that's where we're going to pause for right now. Oops. I want to go back. There we go. So that's where we're going to pause. So there's something right there that they ended it with. So he sailed to America, where he knew of at least one person who would be interested in his ideas, Thomas Edison. So if you can figure out what that's called, that's another little um, author's tool that a lot of our authors use. R.L. Stein and his Goosebumps is very popular for it. So now what you're going to do is take any notes that you have in your notebook. If you'd like to continue reading the story, feel free. You can go on the um, Google Slides and finish it up if you'd like and take notes on it. Uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to go to the assignment. And in the assignment, you're going to see all those little boxes, very similar to Tuesday's assignment. Yes, Tuesday's assignment. And you're going to fill in at least one of the notes. If you want to put in uh, one or two notes that you've made, whether it's a unknown word with a definition or something you noticed, a question you had, anything at all that made it into your notebook, put one of those in there and then you're all set for the day. If you would like to continue the story, you can read the rest of the story on your own.